Okay, here we're going to start looking at the more interesting aspects of game theory. And what we're going to look at are what are known as non-strictly determined games. So nothing super heavy in this one, just kind of some terminology, some observations, and some thoughts. So let's start with an example. So suppose two people play what's called two-finger mora, and there's variations on this, but the basic idea is it's almost like playing rock, paper, scissors, but instead of, uh, you know, rock, paper, scissors, you'll either show one finger or two, and the other person will do the same thing, and basically depending on, you know, the, the, the fingers that you show and your opponent show, you agree to some sort of payoff. So, again, the idea is, suppose if, if both players each show one finger, then player R gets two dollars. If player R shows one finger and player C shows two fingers, then player R has to pay three dollars. Likewise, if player R shows two fingers, player C shows one finger, uh, again, player R has to pay three dollars. And if they both show two fingers, then player R wins four dollars. So one thing you might think about already is which is there, you know, intuitively can you think of would it be better to either be player R or player C? Um, do you have any preference here? And we'll obviously discuss, uh, discuss this in more detail, but you know, kind of an interesting question just to think about immediately. So one thing to point out is there is no saddle value, and let's look at that real quick. So if you think about player R selecting a row, in the first row the worst thing that could happen would be player R would have to pay three dollars. The same thing in the second row, the worst thing that could happen would be to pay out three dollars. Well, if you're the uh, column player, in the first column, the worst thing that could happen would be you have to pay $2. And uh, in the second column, hopefully, I think I said in the first column. So in the first column, the worst thing that can happen is you pay $2. In the second column, the worst thing that can happen is you pay out $4. And since none of the entries is in both a circle and a square, that tells us that there's no saddle value. So this is a not strictly determined game. So obviously the big question here, uh, what is the best strategy for each player? Is there a best strategy for each player? Maybe that's what we should ask ourselves first. And the cool answer is, uh, there does turn out to be some optimal strategies. So first off, let's, uh, let's, let's Let's talk about some other things here, and we're going to need sort of a sort of, some sort of random process, and this is how we can introduce some sort of random process. You know, you can imagine if you're playing this game, you know, you would probably you know alternate between rows kind of at random, and you know alternate between columns at random. Suppose you wanted to do something a little more long term, uh, ha have a more long term prob probability associated with how you pick rows or columns. Okay, suppose you, you know you want to again alternate in some mixed pattern. Suppose you're player one and you decide to pick row one with a probability of one out of four or 0.25, and you want to pick row two with probability three out of four. And maybe player two decides to choose the first column with a probability of three fifths and column two with a probability of two fifths. So you know how could you accomplish that that you know that those long run probabilities well one way to do it would be to simply have like two different urns so maybe the player r has an urn with four marbles in it one blue and three red and maybe if they pick the blue marble that's going to correspond to choosing row 1 and if they pick a red marble that'll correspond to choosing row 2 and again after every you know so so you, you pick a marble that tells you what row to play you put the marble back in and you can keep repeating this random process over and over and over and that's going to give you the long run probability. Same thing with the column player. Maybe they have five marbles total, three blue, two red. Again, choosing a blue marble will mean they pick the first column. Picking a red marble will mean they choose the second column. So again, you could achieve these long run probabilities with some random process like this. 
Okay, let's introduce uh, some, some, some terminology here. And again, not really going to do many computations in this video, just going to introduce some ideas, and then we'll start, uh, start grinding on some stuff in the next example, the next video. Okay, so we're going to introduce again some definitions, and this is what, is what are known as strategies for player R and player C. So suppose we've got some matrix with entries A, B, C, D. I'm just restricting myself to a 2 by 2 matrix here. R's strategy is going to be denoted by a probability row matrix. And the reason that we'll use uh, rows and columns, uh, that'll become apparent here in, a, uh, in the next video. But suppose there's a probability row matrix with entries P1, P2. Both entries have to be greater than or equal to 0. And if we add them together, they add up to 1. So just basic probability stuff. That's what's known as R's strategy. Okay, so basically those, those associated probabilities. C's strategy is going to be denoted by a, whoops, I've got row matrix. I shouldn't have that at all. It's going to be a column matrix. Okay, so C's strategy is den denoted by a probability column matrix, as you can see here. And that has entries Q1 and Q2. Again, both entries are, are greater than or equal to 0. And if we add them together, we get 1. So what we said just a second ago in our example, uh, we would have for us that P equals 1 fourth and 3 fourths. Okay, that's the probability associated with player R, right? There was a 1 fourth probability that they would pick the first row, 3 fourths probability they would choose the second row. The same thing with Q. There's a 3 fifths probability they would choose the first column. 2 fifths probability that they would choose the second column. Just a little uh, other terminology. If, if one of the elements is a 1 and the other is a 0, this is what's known as a pure strategy because you're always going to pick either that row or that column. If it's not a pure strategy, it's what's known as a mixed strategy. And that's what we're going to be focusing on, finding that mixed strategy. So again, the big question here is, um, is there going to be an optimal mixed strategy for both players? And the amazing, I don't know, I think it's interesting, uh, the answer to this is actually yes, there's an optimal strategy for both players. If not, right, this, this whole discussion would probably not be so interesting. So uh, the big question is how do you actually go about finding these optimal strategies? And that's what we're going to start discussing in the next video. We're going to introduce the notion of the expected value of a game. So if you've seen expected value, uh, we're going to use that, that notion, the expected value. We'll come up with a way to compute the expected value of a game. And then we'll use that to help us figure out some optimal strategies.